How should Trump and Hillary attack each other during the debates? Some thoughts, predictions, suggestions. People have been asking me this, so I figure I'll give my two cents. Without mincing any words, I'm just going to jump right into the Clinton half because she's the weaker debater of the two. One thing to note, a few days ago during that Commander-in-Chief forum on NBC, the same Commander-in-Chief forum that was heavily publicized because of Matt Lauer, because he was lambasted for being a disastrous interviewer, I happen to think uh, it may have been uh, a cover, actually, for Hillary's being caught wearing an earpiece. The first thing she should do during the debates is, you know, speaking of which, is not do that, not wear an earpiece, because people are going to think that all of her answers are just canned answers, and that someone is directing her, which is true, and that she's not capable of doing things without a team behind the scenes, which is also true, <laughs> whereas Trump is infamous and well known for going off prompter. And that makes him personable to a lot of people, which is a huge problem for Hillary because she's perceived as being cold. And of course her whole, we came, we saw, he died, statement about Muammar Gaddafi. I would think that would leave a lot of people feeling that way. Uh, so during the debates, I would suggest for Hillary, if her trump card, pun intended, is to drop more 9-11 <laughs> for points, uh, that's going to fail. So this is not 2006, this is 2016. Invoking 9-11 does not resonate as much with the public as it once did. In all of the debates with Bernie, she came out looking weak by all public perception. If she comes out weak with Trump, which I anticipate she will, the general population at large is going to perceive that, no matter how the media tries to spin it, and it's going to influence their opinion. Even Martin O'Malley looked like a stronger candidate on stage compared with Clinton during those debates, but she was heavily favored, so that's why. Another thing that's important to point out is that Hillary has stained herself now by treading into Donald Trump territory, and what I mean by that is she's lowering herself to his level of mudslinging pol politics, so for him it works. For her it doesn't, and, you know, let me explain what I mean by that. When initially... At the beginning of the campaign, when Trump would insult her, you know, she played the magnanimous elder stateswoman and brushed it off. And that's good. That was exactly the, the right move because she's selling herself as, as America's healing grandma. So therefore, she was received by the public as being above Trump's pettiness. But now since, since then, she's lowered herself to his level. And so that's going to reflect poorly on her. Again, just last night, she came out with this really odd bucket of deplorables comment. Uh, much like her wacky and essentially useless alt-right speech, she again called Trump supporters, which are arguably 25% of eligible voters, or certainly at the very least a large swath of the American public. She insinuated that they're uh, racist, sexist, transphobic, Islamophobic, xenophobic, phobic, phobic bigots. All the SJW buzzwords in the dictionary. So it's one thing to attack Trump personally, to attack his top aides, as we've, saw, as we've seen in the past. That's to be expected. But to attack the voters, that's risky. But as I've said in previous videos, she seems to be intent on alienating everyone. So much so that by the time WikiLeaks decides to drop their final big leak, it may not even be necessary in order for Trump to win, seeing as how Hillary is, is committed to sabotaging herself, or whoever is on her team that's feeding her just the worst fucking strategic information they possibly could. And it's enough to lend credence to the rumor that there may be a mole in the Clinton camp <laughs> trying to derail her. I don't... <laughs> who knows if that's there's anything substantive to that, but... It would seem so, like, by her, her, the way she's behaving and the choices she's making. Now, as to what her debate attack strategy should be, there's a lot that you could attack Trump on, but likely she's going to attack Trump using the same old, same old, judging by her recent speeches, and that is accusations of racism. Which brings to mind something I heard recently from Scott Adams on the Rubin Report, he said that he believes the slur of being racist or being called a racist still holds a lot of negative weight. It depends which demographic you're talking about, and 
to that effect, the reason why I disagree with with it with what he says regarding uh, racist the word that being such a heavy slur is because of SJWs and this culture of safe space stuff having reduced the power of this word. Even four years ago, I would have said that accusations of racism would stick or would harm a person's reputation. But now you have people like you even you know you even have people like RuPaul. RuPaul being accused of transphobia. Uh, this was a little while ago, and that was when it really started to get like snowball started gathering steam. And uh, but you know, a little more recently, posters of Martin Luther King quotes being taken down by college students because they were not inclusive enough. Like really, <laughs> MLK is not inclusive enough. Sorry, kids. You know. Uh, and uh, yeah, no. So even um, think of a popular show such as South Park has been parodying the whole college campus safe space culture, and you know even elder generations are sensing that culture has gotten absurd. When even President Obama, who is not only a man in his fifties, but largely perceived as uh, the king of all leftists, even though he's not, but I, I'm not going to go into that. So even Obama has said some statements regarding the sort of uh, authoritarian tone of much of what the youth or the radical, quote-unquote, reg regressive left has been engaging in on college campuses across America. So that leads me to believe that most people do not feel that being slimed as a racist holds the weight it once did. And much of public opinion, again, as you can see, when ordinary people, that is, people who are not partisans, People who are not typically political, apolitical people are polled and they're asked, you know, do you believe uh, Trump is racist? There's a mixed reaction. Yeah, younger people tend to say yes, but older people tend to say no. And also, I think a lot of people would be surprised by the differences in opinion uh, along racial lines. It's important to break down the demographic data. Many people that believe Trump is, is racist are either young, uh, first-generation immigrants from Latin countries, of course, or partisans that never had any intention of voting Trump anyway, so you can just discount what they have to say right away as far as like how they affect his chances of, of winning the election. Aside from that, it would seem that largely public opinion of Trump is that although he may be a colossal asshole, He's not a racist. And people watching this video can split hairs with me all they want, but being that he's been in the limelight for so long, for 30 years, and he's hobnobbed with as many black celebrities as he has and black community leaders such as Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, etc., and has never, never been accused of racism before running against a Democrat, I just don't think that continued accusations of racism will stick. And for the people who already do believe he is, like I said, they're, least, they're much less likely to, be, to vote for him anyway, so kind of their opinion in that regard doesn't matter. And as I've said in other videos, uh, much of Trump's support is hardened support. It really doesn't matter what he says or does at this point. They're going to vote for him. Now, you know, back to Hillary <clears throat> and what she can do. She could attack him on his flip-flopping. She could attack him on his many lawsuits and scandals that he's had. But again, he's not in a position of, of government power. So the abuse or the perceived, uh, you know, abuse, it doesn't, it doesn't shock people as much. Someone in the business world, I think in many cases, it might even be expected given sort of the like history with Wall Street type people when you think, oh man, that big Wall Street guy, he's, he's doing a time in Club Fed because he defrauded a bunch of people as he was engaged in a Ponzi scheme, whatever. You know, people just kind of brush that right off their shoulder. That's to be expected. You know, these all these people are greedy and corrupt. But if, you, if you're Secretary of State and you have a server in your, in your bathroom and it gets hacked and Iranian nuclear scientist name is, is said in one of those, mentioned in one of those emails, and that person ends up executed, it reflects much, much worse in the eyes, I think, of the, of the common American than if she were in the private industry somehow, and it just, you know, positions of power, that's, it just has, it's really gonna affect people's opinion. So, she could attack him on, on his scandals, but 
it might be risky because if he hits her back with her scandals, it'll be bad. And you know, most likely she will try and mention it, and then she's going to get hit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's going to get hit back hard. She's going to slap him in the face, and he's going to kick her right in the guts. So how intelligently she'll go about it, that remains to be seen. So a few other points that, that might make sense is uh, you could make an argument against Trump's sort of penchant for perceived praising of dictators, but I think the way that that will be perceived by most people is less that Trump is a dictator groupie and more that it'll just feed into this idea of him being a strong figure, a strong leader, quotes, air quotes, strong leader, even if somewhat of a bully. But, you know, people will feel like at least we can rely on this guy, right? That'll be the perception. So remember, it's not the truth that matters. It's perception. It would seem he's a bully who will accomplish goals on behalf of America. That, in the minds of many, is better than a weak, old, coughing woman. And I think in the case of trying to connect Putin and Trump together, it's more likely that people will see that as you know, reconfirming this idea of Trump having good negotiation skills. One could spin it that way from his business experience uh, that his business negotiation skills will lend themselves to diplomacy. And since his trip to Mexico, and again, perception, I think that's only going to help in fostering that idea. What concerns me personally about some of what Trump has said is that he's someone of an authoritarian when it comes to many things, but my personal issue is on free speech. Hillary might bring something like that up if she were, again, smart, but based on all the decisions she's made, uh, she's not as calculating as Trump is. I think if she wanted to make a cultural libertarian case for as why not to vote Trump, she could, but I doubt she will. I have a feeling she's just going to stick with the racism, racism, racism crap. She could also make a case against building the border wall. She could say, well, building this wall will be expensive, which I'm sure Hillary loves to tax and spend. She even at one point said in, in a speech that she did, she was going to raise taxes, which I think she misspoke. But she said, I'm going to raise taxes on the middle class at a rally. And everybody cheered like a bunch of bobblehead sycophant idiots. So again, I don't think she's going to make intelligent cases against Trump. Even if she did, Ben Carson attempted to appeal to intellect with, and that's funny to say, Ben Carson, <laughs> like creationist. <laughs> but if I watched the uh, Republican de um, primary debates, and there were times when he actually tried to present policy, policy issues, like legit policy issues. He attempted to appeal to intellect with some of his policy proposals during the Republican debates, but it didn't matter. He was branded as being like a sleepyhead, as being low energy. And so Trump is using persuasion techniques. And the reason why he succeeds is because he knows how to manipulate cognitive biases. So the reason why I think that Trump is going to have a strong showing or give a strong performance in the debates against Clinton is judging by his past debate performances during the primaries. If you've been watching all along since way back, it's pretty obvious that Jeb Bush was the shoe in establishment choice and that Trump came in and, and filleted him, much to the dismay of you know all of the establishment people. And then he moved on to Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, and he was very surgical in how he dismantled all of them. You can expect Trump to continue to use that sort of signature brand of debating, which is partly psychological warfare and, and um, also a mix of forcefulness and comedy. Think of how he answers questions when attacked. Even when he's called out on something, for example, he was put into a corner regarding a question about women. And how did he answer? Now, for anyone else, that would have been damned if you do, damned if you, if you don't, catch-22 situation. He had to answer the question, but if his answer had been a straightforward answer... He, either way, he would have taken a hit because it was a catch-22 question. But how did he handle it when asked about women? He said, only Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> and then the whole crowd laughed. The whole crowd erupted into laughter. And he completely disarmed that question. He diffused what would have been a potentially damaging question for anyone else. For anyone else, well, even including himself. But he knew how to disarm that question, and he did. 
And I believe he'll continue to do that sort of thing in the presidential, the general election presidential debates. So that's what we're going to see. Now, Hillary could also make a case against Trump by attacking his economic policies. She could back him into a corner. If taking all of that into consideration, she could attack him in a way where she backs him into a corner and just continues asking for specifics on policies because, you know, Trump's style is, is to be purposely vague. Like I said, it's about persuasion and mental trickery. So I think if Hillary wanted to grill Trump and really press for specifics without relenting on him, that might also damage Trump because people might say, okay, you know, this guy's just flying by the seat of his pants here. But she's not likely to do that because she's a weak debater. She's not aggressive, and this issue of health concerns isn't going away, and it appears that there's some truth to it. So even if she manages to put Trump on the defensive, she'll, she'll never del deliver the coup de grace. If in between a good assault on him during the debate, she breaks into a whooping cough fit. Now, to switch gears here, Trump, if, uh, if I were his consultant, I would suggest attacking her credentials since uh, everyone seems to believe that that's the best thing Hillary's got going for her. She's the most experienced candidate in history, 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 as all the mainstream media outlets like to parrot. This is how Trump should dismantle her most experienced political career. So one, her time as first lady. You know, not much there. Uh, since she was mostly in Bill's shadow. She was, you know, as a first lady, you're not really doing much. But the easy target there is support of bad trade deals, which she championed, and keep him on his main message, which is the economy, or economics. And, uh, of course, her support of the three strikes law that hurts uh, black Americans disproportionately. He might use that and her super predator comments to gain points with black voters. Two, her time as a senator. She was pretty much a do-nothing senator, except in her opposition to <laughs> gay marriage equality. Like, man, if ever, uh, her past just sets itself up to be, to just to attack her. Honestly, I would use that first to attack her leftist support, which is already extremely soft, if existent at all. Then, you know, uh, as she, when she was a New York senator, I would smash her, smash her, because for whatever reason, the, a lot of people still don't seem to realize the paradigm shift that's going on, that um, Hillary is a neoliberal and she's pro-war. She is a super-duper war hawk. This is the opportune, and, and Trump is running, uh, he, he's trying to go anti-globalism, anti-nation uh, building. This is, for him, he should completely smash her on her glowing support of the Iraq war. Notably, her passionate and lengthy speech in support of the war. Everyone is weary of war, right and left. Aside from being illegal, unethical, and murderous, it's expensive putting us deeper into debt, and that makes it a good springboard since Trump's strong point. His strong point is, is uh, staying on his message, and part of his message, half of it, 50% of his message, is economy, the economy. And add on top of that his anti-globalism, anti-nation building, as I said, stances, so he says. You know, we'll see if he gets in whether or not he's actually anti-nation building. But uh, lastly, number three, this would be my third point in my sort of suggestions for Trump. Her time as Secretary of State. This is ripe for the picking. I don't think I, he needs this suggestion. I think he's already doing a pretty good job of this already. Like, he's already been hitting her hard on, on pretty much all this stuff. So, you know, you name the fucking scandal. Uh, as she, during her time as Secretary of, St of, of State, Benghazi, uh, Libya, pay to play, emails, having many devices which he viewed classified documents on and they were inappropriately disposed of like just recently this is another new scandal I mean she literally smashed cell phones with hammers there's oh god I mean there's a way of 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 disposing of sensitive of, of uh, devices that have handled classified documents and smashing it with a rock is not the way to do it is not the way to do it. So every single day there's a new scandal. And it seems like, yeah, her time as Secretary of State was just uh, was just a boon 
as for uh, will be a boon for Trump as far as like what he'll be able to just pick out of his uh, <laughs> basket. So the the basket of um, deplorables. So the person who's gonna have the basket of deplorable things is gonna be Trump. Deplorables of uh, of Hillary. Anyway, <clears throat> those are my predictions and uh, a few suggestions. We'll see how things eventually play out on the 26th when the first debate takes place.